We are at top of pre-show. Places, please. Thank you, places. Thank you, places. Hello, and welcome, bakers. Thank you for coming in a little bit early prior to the competition, so our film crew can conduct some on-camera interviews. I ask you to begin with stating your name and what you do for a living. I'm Chai Honey. I'm an artist and a baker. Uh, in other words, I bake art. And the art I bake is often quite edible. I can't wait to taste your art, Chai. Uh, how about you, Kale? What do you do? I'm Kale Wellington. My parents named me after their favourite vegetable. I'm in sales and I like my job. Excellent! <laughs> uh, Fig? Yes, sir. Uh, Hello, I'm Fig Benedict. I'm 16 years old and uh, I'm in secondary school studying for my GCSEs in between practicing my bakes. Good luck. I haven't graduated yet either. I just uh, can't seem to find the motivation to jump back into it. Oh. Uh, can't remember even where I went to university. Oh well, uh, moving on. Juniper, you're up. Oh. Uh, thank you, yes. Uh, my name is Juniper Graham, and uh, if you'll excuse me, my tea is ready. Uh, yes, uh, of course. Um, dill? Oh, <laughs> dear, you caught me in the middle of eating my oats. <laughs> if anyone's hungry, I have extra. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, dill. <laughs> um, Chai, what inspires you? Oh, the sky, the ocean, mountains, trees, animals, birds, fish, insects. <laughs> so basically everything. I am open to wherever the journey takes me. In fact, just recently, my sister asked if I'd make the cake for her wedding. The theme was, and two shall become one. Ah, it was glorious. The two milk chocolate sun-kissed mountains with gold luster overglaze sprinkled, sprinkled with dried ginger flakes. Two rivers of blueberry marmalade cascading down from either side, meeting in the middle where the bride and groom sat in a fondant kayak, sailing away into a new adventure. They both love kayaking. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> so Kale, what inspires you as a baker? I'm oh, my husband. I do it all for him. He's my biggest fan. He really encouraged me to be a part of this competition. I told him it would mean we wouldn't have as much time together since I'd be practicing my bikes during the weekdays and filming every weekend. But when the time came, he packed my bags and practically pushed me out the front door. How supportive is that? Sounds like a fairy tale romance. Uh does he have a sister? Uh, let's move on, Fig, shall we? <clears throat> now, Fig, in addition to studying for your exams in between practicing your bakes, I understand you are an accomplished performer starring in shows at your local community theater. So how are you feeling? Are you ready for this showstopper challenge? Yes, I think I'm ready. I have to admit, I. I thought I was going to have to leave the show last week when my carrot pudding souffle collapsed, but here I am. It's like performing on the stage, isn't it? Our sets, the kitchen, our props are cooking utensils. And the only thing that's missing is a script. That's the scariest part. I have absolutely no idea how it's going to end. It is nerve wracking, really. I understand. <laughs> That's how I feel whenever my mother sets me up on a blind date. Sorry, what? Uh -huh. <clears throat> so, Juniper, I, um, you're a meteorologist you've spoken of in earlier interviews, but what would you say made you switch to being an apple farmer? I guess when I look at an apple, I see the universe. I see the world. I see myself. A peel, an apple, and what you get, naked, vulnerable, piece of fruit. Chop it up, bake it in the crust, pie, mash it up, boil it, applesauce. You understand? Maybe. <laughs> um, so Dill, any interesting hobbies? 
Oh, I, a little bit louder, dear. I can't, I can't quite hear what you're saying. Of course, of course. I, I have quite a few, actually. Post boxes, for instance. Oh, uh, what, what about them? Oh, I love photographing them. Lamp posts, too. Ooh. Some are quite exquisite. I have stacks and stacks of photo albums in my living room of post box and lamp posts. I also collect salt and pepper packets. Uh, why? <laughs> Well, if there's a pandemic, of course, in case there's ever a shortage. <laughs> Brilliant. Balloons. Uh, pardon? Oh, just thinking more about what inspires me. Penguins, uh, bees, bulldogs, sourdough, afternoon tea, queuing for fish and chips in a light drizzle, saying sorry. I could go on and on. <laughs> I'm sure you could. Um, so, Kale, tell us who you like to bake for. My husband. Whenever he's home for dinner, I love treating him to a quiet, candlelit dinner for two. I could just spend hours staring at him eating. It usually makes him uncomfortable and he tells me to stop. He's shy, you know. He's so cute. I don't like any public displays of affection or letting people know we're married. Even after ten years. We're soulmates. Soulmates, yes. You're so lucky. So, uh, Fig, Who's your someone special? Oh, <laughs> well, I love baking for my family, of course, but, um, you know, there's also that special someone in my life who inspires me. I haven't taught my parents yet, or him. I, I don't want to say too much, though. <laughs> <laughs> what would be, what would you consider to be uh, too much? <laughs> well, Maybe mentioning the fact that he's a singer, songwriter, and guitarist. Go on. Uh, well, he writes and produces songs on his own, and he's even created his own record label. But um, I I I've said too much. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Apple trees. Uh, uh, pardon? Apple trees inspire me. They have a period of dormancy followed by a flurry of an activity in the spring. I suppose you, in a way, you could say that I'm an apple tree. There's certainly been a flurry of activity being intestine on the show. Porridge inspires me, and oatmeal, and hot cereals, really. Just like baking. They fill your heart and your stomach. Just a bowl full will keep you full until lunch, and, and again, from lunch until dinner. Oh, 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 what would I do without my oats? A question we have asked ourselves at some point in our lives, I am sure. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I have just gotten word from our film crew that it is time to give you all a quick break to get ready for our competition. But before we begin, some words from our producer and director, Holly Barber and Lee Emke. Thank you so much, Sue. And thank you, our audience, for being here. We're so excited for the world premiere of our mini musical, The Great British Baking Parody. Before we start, we wanted to tell you just a little about the show, um, for the inspiration behind it and how it came about. Holly and I wrote this mini musical about a month and a half ago uh, when the Shakespeare Festival St. Louis put out a call for scripts for a virtual playwright bake off. So she and I had already collaborated on a mini operetta called That Perfect Kiss for the Q Collective in the fall, and we were excited to work together again. It was amazing. When we realized that we both had also been watching a lot of the Great British Baking Show on Netflix, we decided to take the term Bake Off literally and write a script in honor of one of our favorite quarantine pastimes. So we were given five ingredients or prompts to incorporate into our script, which were a line from a Shakespeare play, a delivery, a mistaken identity, an element of either fire, water, earth, or air, and five, something ugly transformed into something beautiful. So we decided to assign one ingredient to each baker, which automatically set our scene in the quarterfinals. We came up with the idea of having the contestants bake a cake in honor of their favorite musical artist. So each contestant's song is a parody mashup that pairs one of Tom Howe's iconic melodies from the Great British Baking Show with the accompaniment of a hit song from the contestant's favorite artist. Although our script wasn't the right fit for the Shakespeare Bake Off, we decided to produce it ourselves and we really had the best time doing it. And we'd like to thank Charlie Myers and Shakespeare St. Louis for providing the initial spark that led to tonight's production. 
Tonight's performance is free, but if you're so moved, all donations will be split equally among the actors who have given their time and talent to this project. You can donate electronically via either Venmo or the Cash app, both to username Captain Zanger. This information is also in the description underneath this video. Thank you again for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the show. Okay, actors, we are at top of show. Places, please. Thank you, places. Thank you, places. <laughs> what you're doing I'm in training what on earth for for eating of course the quarterfinals our five remaining contestants were about to hear what the showstopper challenges and I, I can't wait to taste their bakes <laughs> righto let's get on with it then shall we good morning bakers chai honey kale wellington <laughs> Big Benedict, Juniper Graham, and Dill Baker. Well, it looks like we're all here, so now it is time for your special showstopper challenge. <laughs> Mary and Paul would like you very much, please, to make a three-tiered cake. That's two tiers for me and one tier for the rest of you all to eat. <laughs> and that's not all. We want you to decorate your cakes in the inspiration of your favorite musical artist. Three hours on the clock. Get ready. Get set. Bake. Hi is baking a chocolate cake in honor of David Bowie and Queen. <laughs> it's ready or not, here I come in time, and now to prove to Mary Ann Paul that I'm an artist and a baker. No more room for errors, none at all. I'll sift the flour, baking powder, and granulated sugar is best. I will add chocolate, lots of chocolate, and inside I'll add some lemon zest. Then on the outside, chocolate truffles, a fondant face of Bowie and Queen. Why chocolate zigzags and some sparklers. It's quite tall. I hope it does not lean. <laughs> it looks like a towering inferno of chocolate scrumptiousness. How much longer on your bake? Will you leave the poor baker alone? Let's not distract her, especially while she's wielding fire. <laughs> yes, I, I suppose you're right. I'm rather fond of my eyebrows. Choice. <laughs> uh, I must keep calm and bake a great cake. It must be greater than all the rest. Unquiet meals make ill digestions, so I must not lose my head and stress. And soon I'll put them in the oven. I've never baked three cakes all at once. I'll make a frosting, add more chocolate. If I lose, I'll feel like such a dunce. <laughs> Don't worry, Chai. Just just breathe and stay near a water source. Here you go. Just set that there. Okay. <clears throat> so, <laughs> let's see what Kale is up to. Kale is baking a nut tot in honor of Sting and the police. Uh, uh, Kale, uh, you're just the person I want uh, wanted to see. Um, I have a special delivery for you. Uh, on this show, you are always serving food to the judges, but we're going to switch that up a bit. I have been summoned by a judge to serve you these papers. Oh, how exciting. I wonder what they say. Oh, they're divorce papers. Oh. I'm, I'm so sorry, Kale. Would you like a hug? How could he? How dare he? He made me think he loved me. Ten years we've been married, and now he wants to be free. Forget it. 
forget him, I need to bake my nut tort. The judges won't care that I've been summoned by the court. The walnuts, pecans, the hazelnuts, his manhood. I have to crush them, crush them good until they're mush. It's therapeutic. I like to crush him by pears. Does anyone have pairs of nuts to share? Chestnuts, pine nuts, peanuts, or two cashews? I'll crush them all and drown it with a bottle of booze. Preheat the oven. It needs to be hot as hell. Now it goes in our flaming cell. How could he? How dare he? He made me think he loved me. Ten years we've been married, and now he wants to be free. Forget it, forget him. I need to make my frosting. The judges won't care that this whole thing is exhausting. The walnuts, pecans, the hazelnuts, his manhood. I'll have to crush them, crush them good until they're mush. It's therapeutic. I like to crush him by pairs, and I'll crush his nuts and get revenge, I swear. <clears throat> Well, I see you're busy at work here, Kale, so we'll just let you keep on crushing those nuts. <laughs> Cheerio. Uh, that was a, a bit intense, wouldn't you say? <laughs> um, let's see what Fig is up to, shall we? Fig is baking a pumpkin spice cake decorated in honor of her favorite musical artist, Ed Sheeran. Oh, Fig, I highly recommend that I pre-taste Everything you bake before you present it to the judges. <laughs> Don't listen to her. Tell us about your pumpkin spice cake. <laughs> Beating up the eggs now for my pumpkin spice. Then I'll add the butter and then I'll mix it twice. In this bowl there's flour mixed with buttermilk. First I'll beat on low speed until it's smooth as silk. In this bowl there's pumpkin, flour, nutmeg, cloves, cinnamon and ginger. I think it's done by Job. Mix it all together, mix it thoroughly. I'm forgetting something. Can't imagine what it be. Can you? Did I add the sugar? Oh no, fiddlesticks! Better add some sugar. Just a couple do. Or two, or three, or four, or five, or six. I think I'll call it good now. Get my potted pans. Pour the batter in and now it's out of my hands. I forgot to taste it. Nah, I'm sure it's fine. Need to make the frosting because I don't have much time. Uh, Fig, are you sure you don't want me to pre-taste your batter? It's too late for that, can't you see? She's already put it in the oven. And, and she still has lots to do before time runs out on that clock. <laughs> Shall we? Good luck with your bake, Fig. Off we go. Ah, it's Juniper, our meteorologist, turned apple farmer, turned baker. Juniper is baking a special apple cake decorated in honor of earth, wind, and fire. Mm -hmm. That is quite a large pile of apple peels you've got there. Uh, where did Juniper get all the apples? Why, from an apple tree, of course. Well, then. Are no apple trees in the tent? <laughs> oh dear. Um, Juniper, you look rather relaxed. Is that a book you're reading? Oh, oh, can I see the pictures? Well, you know, not all books have pictures. I think they should. Hmm. Yes, I am reading, my cake is cooling, my frosting is all set to spread. After the peeling, which was quite grueling, I saved the seeds for my homestead. Planted them in pots, in rows, at water and soil, and sun to grow. Then I was back to waiting, so I checked the horoscope, did some online banking, five minutes of planking, started a charity for unemployed meteorologists, named a star after my mom for Mother's Day, and planted a virtual crop on Farmville. What was I talking about? 
Oh yes, apple seeds. In one short week, I should see it sprouting, and then it will grow to a tree. Then I'll grow apples, pick more apples, and make more cakes and plant more seeds. I can't wait. Well, thank you, Juniper. Carry on. I have never seen someone so obsessed with apples. <clears throat> well, uh, if it weren't for apples, we wouldn't have gravity. Okay, well, let's move on and see what Dill is up to. Ah, yes, porridge lover Dill is making an oatmeal cake decorated in honor of the band Oasis. Mm. I love out in the morning, in the afternoon or at night, whether it is hot or cold, the day is happier. And brighter and the fiber keeps you constant and quite regular. I love my oatmeal time, my oatmeal time. And when I'm feeling audacious, I add raisins. <laughs> you might think oatmeal's boring. Just Oats a chance and you'll see. If you say so, Dill. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, bakers, step away from your bakes. It's showstopper time. <laughs> Shai, please bring your triple chocolate cake up. And from the looks of it, you seem to have worked quite well under pressure. <laughs> a magnificent work of art, if ever I've seen one. Uh, is there a fire extinguisher on hand, just in case? <laughs> Blow out the sparklers and then taste it. It's rather tall, don't wobble or quake. Three tiers of chocolate, sheer perfection. I expect to get a pole and shake. Style over substance. Oh no, really? I spent a lot of time on this cake. I'm disappointed and I might cry. Too much chocolate was a big mistake. <laughs> Chocolate is never a mistake, dear. Uh, the blowtorch, on the other hand... Uh... Sorry, Chai. Remember, it's only a cake. Oh, uh, Kale, uh, I see you're still busy mulling over your message and drowning your sorrows in a bottle of wine, but uh, it's time for Mary and Paul to judge your showstopper nut tort. So tell me, how is it? Don't lie and say you love it. If you don't, just tell me. Don't feign my heart counterfeit. If you prove untrue, thou art a boiler plate sore. Away, you mouldy rogue. Away, I say. Forgive me, judges. Please don't bid me farewell. Or I'll have nothing. I'll be an empty shell. Is there anything we can do? Does anyone have any more nuts for them? Anyone? Uh... I'll see um, what we have. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, uh, Fig, judging by the shape of you, you look ready to bring up your pumpkin spice showstopper. Have it for your sweet tooth, it's my pumpkin spice. How could it be salty? Will you please taste it for it? No, 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 Mary! Let's put salt for sugar in my pumpkin spice. That's why it tastes salty in every pumpkin slice. Oh, bloody. Oh, um, it looks like Fig experienced a bit of mistaken identity between the salt and the sugar. Uh -huh. uh, Juniper, the judges would love to see your apple cake showstopper. We mm. know you have many reasons for loving apples, so tell us about it. 
My cake is ready with apples plenty. A masterpiece, please take a bite. You say it's bready, apples too plenty. I'm sorry for my oversight. I'll still eat it and ooh, and then you can teach me how to play Farmville. <laughs> uh, dill! <clears throat> we know your oatmeal is your wonder wall. Please bring up your oatmeal cake for the judges to taste. In my baking, in the topping and in the cake, take a bite and let me know you told me that my cake was hideous and that it looks just like a brick, but now you think. It tastes simply divine, simply divine. I knew you'd love the raisins. How you thought oatmeal was boring. But now you love it, I see. Thank you, Dale. And thank you, bakers. Congratulations on a brilliant display of baking. The judges have deliberated. Ooh, that was fast. <laughs> and now I have the wonderful job of announcing this week's star baker. This week's baker turned something grotesquely ugly into something beautiful. Dill, you made us fall in love with oatmeal. Congratulations! Oh, Dill, that's Thank wonderful. You. Well done. You, Perfect. Yeah. You do. Oh, that means that I have the horrible, unpleasant, horrible, awful, dreadful, terrible, ghastly, loathsome. Could you get on with it? <laughs> vile job of announcing who'll be leaving us. As we often say in the 16th century, good night, good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Fig, I'm so sorry. Oh, Fig, darling, oh, you'll oh, be I'm so sorry to see you. Good night, sweetheart. This is too bad. We, okay. we are going to miss you, Fig. Would Very you like much. A hug? Yes. <laughs> Come get in on this hug. Oh, yes. Mel and Sue love here. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, uh, don't forget to break down the shrine to Ed there. Uh, we don't have anyone to clean it up. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and we'll see the rest of you next week at our semi-finals. Cheerio! <laughs> Uh, quickly before we begin the Q&A, we would like to thank a few people for their support on our show. First, we would love to thank our incredible cast for their dedication, creativity, talent, and joy in working on this show. If you would like to donate, donations will be accepted via Venmo and Cash App. You can see the links down below. Mary and Paula are helping you out there. <laughs> and all donations will go to the actors. Thank you so much to Kirsty Williamson and to Janet Buchanan for their cultural consulting work on the show. Thanks to Shane Signorino and Will Buchanan for their tech consulting work on the show. Thanks again to Charlie Myers and Shakespeare St. Louis for providing the initial ingredients. And finally, thanks to all of you for coming. And we're going to open this up for Q&A now.